Our Father, thank you so much for the beautiful day today. Thank you for the freedoms we enjoy in this country. We pray for the servicemen and women that uh, dedicate their lives that we can have that freedom. We pray your watch care over them. Help us to be as responsible in our duties to the school district as our service people are to their duties to our, to our country. And as we wrestle with the issues that come before us, uh, help us to be as wise as Solomon, nation as Job. Help us not to, to help us to have patience so we don't rush into anything haphazardly. But on the other hand, help us be wise enough to move expeditiously. As we help us remember we're public servants, we need to fulfill our service. And uh, help us to remember that when you come to mark against our name, that you don't mark how long we serve, but how well we serve. So help us to fulfill our years with ser uh, good service. These things we pray. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Dr. Brown, thank you. Mr. Kidd, thank you. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 603. We have tonight okay, uh, some special awards and recognitions. We're going to start with item 2B. Dr. Stockton. Okay, this time I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Colshan, who's principal of the Women's High School, to come up and, and introduce our special district recognition for our swimmers. Good evening, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Sanders, members of the board. It is truly an honor to be here to recognize uh, four outstanding young men who uh, did a great job at the state swim meet and along with their, their coach. Um, we went to the state with swim week with four young men, and in those four young men, and Coach Kirshner, I'm sure, will tell you more about it. Um, and, and those four young men brought home the runner-up trophy in the 5A competition. So we're very proud of these young men and the opportunities uh, that they have had that you have provided for them through extracurricular participation. So thank you for that. And with no further ado, I introduce head coach Kent Kirchner. Thank you very much. It's truly an honor to be here, and I appreciate the board at honoring our boys here today, here tonight. And uh, I just want to thank the Lord for giving me and my family 14 years here, here in the Woodlands. And thank you for Dr. Stockton for hiring me when he was the principal at the Woodlands High School. And also to uh, Mr. Colshan, who's been with us uh, all the way through this thing. Um, I w I'd like to uh, introduce these boys here, and, and first let me tell you a little background on the state swim meet. There's 12 events in the state meet, okay? We won four events out of 12, four gold medals out of 12, a silver, and a sixth place, okay? And by doing that, um, we achieved the second place finish at the high school state meet this year. So that was, that was astounding, astounding with four, four individuals like this. The first person I'd like to introduce is Cannon, and I always give them nicknames, Cannon the Comet Clifton. <laughs> Cannon was uh, a member of the 200 medley relay, which won gold, the 200 freestyle relay, which won gold. He also won gold in the 100, meet, 100 freestyle uh, individually and was second on the 400 freestyle relay. And he anchor legged our 400 freestyle relay, and I draw a lot of racing analogies. And basically, he didn't lose the race, we ran out of racetrack. So <laughs> if he would have had five more feet, no problem, okay? But we just ran out of racetrack, and that happens in racing. 
The next person, and also Cannon set school records in the 50 freestyle, the 100 freestyle, the 400 freestyle relay, along with all the other accomplishments he had this year. And he's going to be attending the University of Wisconsin in the fall. Cannon, if you can just slide off. Right there. The next person is Ryan the Rhinoceros Rhino Sorensen. Okay. <laughs> and Ryan, I'd like to introduce his dad back here and his two younger brothers over here and sister. Sorry, I, didn't, I missed you there. You took her picture before. And um, anyway, so Ryan uh, basically set a new school record in the 100 breaststroke. He was a part of the 400 freestyle relay, which also set a school record and also was gold medalist in the 200 medley relay and the 200 freestyle relay. He broke his brother's record in the 100 breaststroke. His brother was a sophomore. Ryan is also a sophomore. So he, that was his only goal of the year, to do that. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce John the Sandman Sandin. John was part of two gold medal relays, the 200 medley relay and the 200 freestyle relay, and also was on the school record holding 400 freestyle relay, John Sandin. And then, I'd like to introduce, last but not least, Dushan Bukobrat. It's not, it's not like a bratwurst or anything like that. That's really his name, Dushan Vukobrat. And I call him the Serbian sensation. <laughs> he's a senior this year. He's coming up on two recruiting trips, one to go to Southern Illinois and take a recruiting trip there and also Purdue. So Dushan was part of the 400 freestyle relay, which set the school record. He's also a gold medalist in the medley relay and the 200 freestyle relay and was sixth in the 100 flight. So these four boys here brought home the second place title for the Woodlands High School this year. And we really appreciate you bringing them up here to honor them. Thank you. Thank you all again very much. All right, continuing along with awards and recognitions, item 2A, Dr. Stock. Ms. Colson, I'll ask you to come back to the podium and introduce our, our special district recognition for our outstanding young bandmaster of the year. Thank you, Dr. Stock and Mr. Sanders. Uh, in 2005, Joni Perez joined our staff as an assistant band director uh, in a well-established program. She came in and in a very short period of time established herself as the go-to assistant director. Uh, when our opening occurred in 2010, uh, we interviewed a wide variety of people and there was no question at the time after the interviews that Joni Perez was the person for our job. And in a very short period of time, in three years, uh, she has brought home area marching contest championships in 2010 and 2012. Uh, we were this year uh, invited to participate in the Midwest Clinic uh, Band uh, Directors Convention, which is the world's largest convention of band directors. 
and we took a group of about 70 kids to perform in front of a couple thousand people in Chicago, and they represented the Woodlands High School and the Town Independent School District in very fine fashion. And that's a true testimony to uh, Joni Perez. Joni, if you'll join me up here, please. As Dr. Stockton mentioned, Joni was recently recognized by the Texas uh, Bandmasters. There's a fraternity of bandmasters uh, as the Texas Young Bandmaster of the Year. And this is an exclusive honor. There's only one person in the state of Texas who gets it each year. We are very honored and delighted to uh, present Ms. Joni Perez as the Texas Young Bandmaster of the Year. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, Joni, we're very proud of you and thank you for representing CISD so well. Thank Again, you. congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Colshin. And uh, thank you, Dr. Stockton. And thank you to the members of the board for um, this wonderful recognition and for the opportunity to uh, meet you and speak with you tonight. Um, I've had the pleasure of working at the Woodlands High School for the past 10 years. And I realized the other day it had been 10 years, <laughs> and that's pretty crazy. And um, as Mr. Colson said, it was uh, it's a young bandmaster's award, and you're probably thinking 10 years doesn't make her sound very young. I'll, I'll explain that real quick. Um, I started my first two years, I was hired as um, a marching instructor on the adjunct staff, and I was a um, private lesson instructor as well for the first two years while I was in college, my last two years of college. And um, the, um, the next uh, five years, as Mr. Colshin mentioned, I had the pleasure of being an assistant director under the leadership of Brett Johnson. And, um, and then uh, three years ago, um, I was offered this wonderful job and the Texas Young Bandmasters Award is offered to someone who's led an organization for under 10 years. Um, so just to explain a little bit about that. <laughs> and, um, I would like to thank Mr. Colshin and um, Mr. Paris, and Mr. Paris um, for uh, believing in me whenever that job became open. Um, I was up against a lot of really, heavy, sorry, it's an emotional thing. Um, I was up against a lot of heavy hitters and uh, I just want to thank you for taking a chance on me, and um, that means a lot. I will never forget that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's also some other individuals that I would like to thank, a wonderful team of uh, music educators and colleagues that I have the pleasure of working with. The first is um, Mrs. Susan Meyer Patterson, who's the head band director at McCullough Junior High. She couldn't be here tonight, but without her, um, any of the things that the Woodlands High School Band has accomplished would not be possible. Uh, there are some other guests that um, could be here tonight. I'm so thankful for them, and I'd like for them to stand if they would when I call their names. Um, Andy Salmon is already standing there in the back of this little one, and um, Ivan De La Cruz and Brian Eisman, if they could all stand. Um, these individuals are my team at the Woodlands High School. They're assistant directors and work with the kids every day. And uh, I share this honor with them because it would not be even remotely possible without the efforts that they all put in every day. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to thank them as well. <laughs> they work tirelessly every day for our students. Um, it takes a full team, it takes all of us. And the kids are wonderful um, to work with. And uh, these guys um, serve them every day as we try to do to help them become good people and strong citizens in the community through music education. And I'm so thankful for them being here. And I'm thankful again for this opportunity. And I'm so grateful to work in Connor ISD where there are wonderful students and parents and a supportive administration. It's a wonderful community. So thank you so very much for this. I really appreciate it. Yeah.
Thank you very much, Mr. Perez. All right, item 2C, Special District Recognition, Dr. Sykes. Ms. Colson, I'm going to ask you to go back to the podium, this time to recognize our state wrestling champion. Again, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I think it's safe to say that at the beginning of any, uh, whether it be athletic competition season, uh, band marching season, choir uh, concert season, that everyone sets out to win the championship. Uh, we have a young lady here uh, tonight that has overcome adversity. Uh, she transferred to us as a junior and was ineligible to participate in varsity competitions in wrestling uh, due to transferring in. Um, in girls wrestling, there are no opportunities for JV participation. You're either a varsity wrestler or in, in the girls division or you don't get to wrestle. So she basically uh, didn't have an opportunity to wrestle as a junior. Uh, she came in as a senior and set her sights on, on winning a state championship. And, uh, we are very proud of Lindsay Spute, and to introduce her, I'll introduce our head wrestling coach, Michael Harris. I want to say thank you very much for uh, honoring us and our, our sport. Um, thank you, Mr. Colson, for uh, uh, honoring and recognizing Lindsay Spute. Lindsay Spute, um, like Colson uh, said, that uh, she had a lot of adversities um, and she was ineligible for junior year, but first time to wrestle for the Woodlands and first time to wrestle in a high school uh, varsity uh, team. And she uh, won districts and she won regionals and then she won state. And she's 30 and 0 with 23 falls. Um, I can't be more proud of her for her dedication and her hard work, hard work in her studies and her hard work in the practice room and as a leader um, in, that, in that practice room. Um, I can't. Be more than happy uh, to uh, introduce Lindsay Spute as our state champion for Connor IC and the Woodlands High School. Lindsay, on behalf of the board, we'd like to thank you for your dedication and congratulations on your big win. I'd like to introduce uh, Lindsay's dad, Sven Spute, who's here tonight. Some of you who have been around for a while may recognize Lindsay's last name. She used to beat up on her older brother, Eric, when he was in high school, and Eric was a three-time state champion. Yeah. <laughs> So you're saying she had some practice. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. All right. <clears throat> Item 2D, Patrons Influencing Education Award, Dr. Stockton. At this time, I'll invite Tommy Johnson from Oak Ridge High School to the podium to introduce our Patron Influencing Education Award winner. Good evening. Mr. Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to nominate Mr. Richard Otwell for the Patrons Influencing Education Award. It is an honor to recognize a humble human being who has made a lasting impact in the lives of so many Oak Ridge families. Mr. Otwell has generously donated time, money, and materials to the Oak Ridge FFA Department and was instrumental in the design and construction of Otwell Agricultural Park and Livestock Complex. This facility consists of a large animal barn with 7,500 square feet, a small animal barn with over 6,000 square feet, and a multi-purpose building with 3,750 square feet, as well as an additional 1,250 square foot house that holds our poultry lab. <clears throat> Words cannot express my sincere gratitude or the Conroe Independent School District's appreciation for the hard work and efforts that Mr. Otwell put into making a wonderful facility for our Oak Ridge High School students. While buildings don't often change a person, this facility will help students through their own projects, build character and dignity, and learn to take responsibility for themselves and others. Mr. Otwell's sincere commitment to all, the education of all youth within our district is evident in the time and materials he has committed over the last year. In addition to a state-of-the-art project, Mr. Otwell continues to work with our team to ensure that our students have all that they need to participate and be successful. 
Mr. Otwell's generosity helped Oak Ridge increase their entries in Montgomery County Fair from 39 entries last year to over 120 entries this year. Words cannot say how privileged we are that our paths have crossed in such a positive way for the students of Oak Ridge FFA. Mr. Otwell's contribution will impact students for years to come. Mr. Richard Otwell and his wife, Kathy, are the owners of Axiom Construction and Team O Motorsports. They are the proud grandparents of Danny and Crystal and the proud grandparents of five grandchildren and one on the way. At this time, it is my honor to introduce Mr. Richard Otwell. Mr. Otwell, on behalf of the board, We'd like to thank you for all that you've done for Oak Ridge uh, High School and the FFA program. Uh, you have one thing in common with every adult in this room, okay? And that is that we believe serving kids is the ultimate goal, okay? And uh, Mr. Otwell put me uh, in my place a while ago when I said, you know, serving kids is a great thing. He said, yeah, dude, there are future yeah <laughs> duh. so uh, you know it just speaks highly of you that you realize that and uh, we thank you for everything and no pie award would be complete without oh I thought you were going to so, the other <laughs> <laughs> I, I know since you since you do all this on behalf of kids I know you, it would be special for you to recognize your family as well as the kids that you support. So I'd like you to you to ask them to stand. All right, y'all stand up. <laughs> In front is my wife, Kathy, my daughter, Crystal, her husband, Scott, and Aubrey. And as far as the real recognition comes from Tommy, of course, you know, he's been instrumental and just unbelievable. Y'all got a great asset in the principal at Oak Ridge. Uh, Chad is a new member for the uh, FFA team as far as the teaching team, and Kelly was very instrumental and drove me with a whip. Uh, you know, if, if there had been competition in swimming, I would have had to have a dog paddling. You know, wrestling, only wrestling I ever did, I got put to sleep the first time I tried, so I wasn't good at that. You know, band members kicked me out, all that kind of stuff. But God gave me the ability to, to construct, and, and for the FFA kids, I have had numerous kids come up and talk about just how much it meant to them that they couldn't take care of an animal and it's teaching them a responsibility of taking care of something and, and acting like it is theirs. And it, it is something that they wouldn't have that opportunity without Tommy and Kelly and with their dream and, and be getting included on that. We had back 30 acres that was uh, basically just a, a haven for deer that I wanted to leave that way. And I'd rather have a haven for kids than I had deer and we get both. So, thank you all very much. you shake those hands. I might want to put somebody. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Well, we're grateful. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. You, you yeah, make sure you don't have to stay for the rest of this. I understand. You Somebody's go got to take a nap. Yeah. Yes, that's what she said. Yeah, go have some All right, item 2E, citizen participation. Madam Board Secretary, is anyone registered to address the board? All right, the next 30 minutes on the agenda this evening has been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please keep in mind that this portion of the meeting is not the appropriate means for bringing complaints for which resolution is sought. Complaints must be addressed by following the appropriate policies and administrative procedures before they can be submitted to the Board of Trustees as an agenda item. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to no more than five minutes for their presentation. 
Delegations of more than five persons must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Also keep in mind that the board cannot deliberate or make a decision regarding any subject that is not posted on the agenda, but it can furnish specific factual information or cite existing policy in response to inquiries. Please call the first person. Dustin Darkenwald. Hi, my name is uh, Dustin Darkenwald, and I've got three students that are uh, in the CISD system. Got one of them here tonight, and another parent, a student from Moorhead Elementary. I first want to thank all the board members and Dr. Stockton for for your work and everything that you do. In in my talking to uh, various school teachers and administrators, I, I, everyone had nothing but good things to say about uh, all the influence that the board has. I've seen. Dr. Stockton and several of the board members at the different schools. I just want to thank you guys for that. It's fourth, very good impression. I want to thank any of the other parents and administrators that are here as well, also participating and becoming informed. And, and as was mentioned earlier, uh, being a great influence on the children. So the, uh, the reason I'm here tonight is uh, to discuss my support and to emphasize my support for additional athletic facilities at Moorhead Junior High to bring them up to uh, comparable standards to what the other junior highs at the Conroe ISD and, and actually, honestly, outside of the Conroe ISD I also have. So, um, we're, we just, we have an eighth grader at Moorhead and so we're new to Moorhead, but as many of you know, the, uh, the school was converted from a, an intermediate school now to a junior high and so there were some restrictions on uh, facility use. So curr currently Moorhead has only one regulation size basketball gym. <clears throat> And I believe that all other CISD high, uh, junior highs have these two gyms. Some of the problems at Moorhead that this has caused in the past are scheduling for the different practices for both the seventh and eighth grade kids, boys and girls, A and B teams, and trying to get those scheduled at different times uh, with the one gym that they have available right now that becomes difficult. Uh, games, all the home games in the past for the last three years were played at Moorhead, and that became a challenge because they only had one court, and so quite often the games wouldn't get over until 9 o'clock, and the visiting teams would get on the bus, and they wouldn't get home until 10 o'clock. Get in bed probably till 11 o'clock by the time they got home or had So uh, that, that became an issue with the other schools that were participating in the district that Moorhead uh, competes in. And so uh, in 2012-2013, those schools said, you know, something needs to change, and they insisted that they you know, secure additional facilities to play the basketball games. So now they're going over to Caney Creek to play those games. And that that has its own set of challenges, um, as you can imagine, scheduling the gym at Caney Creek because <coughs> with scheduling around the, all the athletic uh, events going on at Caney Creek, as well as just due to the proximity of the gyms to the auditorium, they end up having to reschedule events around plays, band concerts, everything else, because they were complaining about the noise, <clears throat> player and session stand. And so, uh, the other issue that it creates is, is Moorhead students um, for basketball games, when it comes time to go over to the games, they take these 50 plus kids that you can imagine are not the easiest to wrangle, and they have to walk across FM 1485, which is a 50 mile an hour highway, and make their way over to uh, to Caney Creek to play games. Uh, and quite often, you know, sometimes that, that's during the high school release. So you got, not only you got junior high kids trying to walk across the street, but you got kids just trying to try figure out how to dodge them. Um, but right now, Moorhead does have, and I know, I know that you've probably all been out there, they do have a second gym, but it's referred to as the Lego gym. It's got a plastic tile floor that isn't suitable for for basketball practice and or play. Um, it was it was the only gym that the intermediate school had. That's how it came to school. The gym. Uh, it, it's also not regulation size, so even if it was to make a change to the floor, it couldn't be used for games because it's regulation size. And there's no room for spectators to sit the walls are close to what 
so that that's the that's the basketball side of the issue. Uh, tennis courts. Orhead doesn't have any tennis courts at all. And again, I believe that most other or all other junior high uh, schools, CISD system have tennis court. The the tennis courts actually create even more of a problem with with the kids crossing the street because not only do they have to do it for matches, but they also have to do it for practice. So they walk over there early in the morning for practice, and then they have to walk back to the school for breakfast if the kids want to have breakfast, and they walk back over there for their athletic period. So there's a lot of transit back and forth. And the tennis courts are actually on the exact opposite side of Caney Creek. And so I actually walked it so that I'd be prepared to know how far it was, and it was a Surprisingly, it was actually a third of a mile over there. And me walking at a brisk walk and no traffic, it took me about eight minutes. So I'd imagine it takes probably at least 10 minutes for the kids with the coaches to walk over there. So for each time they go over there, that's 20 minutes lost transit time, which you know, that's taken out of their practice. Um, the uh, volleyball, it's just the same issue as with the basketball. You only have one court available. For games, for practice, I think they do. They are able to split it up, and they're able to practice. Yeah, they have it's just the same issues with walking over there. Um, based on the you know all the awards that were given out earlier, I realize that you guys recognize that athletics is a, is a very important part of the puzzle, uh, as as I believe as well. And so I'm just trying to show my support, for attempting to get more heads to stand. Um, if, I, if I haven't exceeded my five minutes, what's up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would, then that's it, I guess. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, just ask you guys to continue the support for all the extracurricular activities that you guys do. Uh, my, one of my daughters is in the FLO robotics team at Austin Elementary this year, and probably saw on the, up on the board they did they did great as a rookie team. So I, I want to thank you guys for support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. Item three, consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull any items from the consent agenda? Oh, if not, is there a motion to approval? No motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please vote. Like sign for no. Okay, motion carries. Item 4A, transportation improvements and equipment, Dr. Stockton. I'd like to invite Easy Foster, our director of planning construction, up to the podium to make this presentation. Good evening, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. Uh, this evening I'd like to present uh, for approval the Transportation Center and multiple campus projects. Uh, the Transportation Center projects include uh, items from the 2008 bond referendum that totaled $1,543,820. They also include uh, TCEQ required upgrades to the fuel management system, leak detection systems, fuel dispensers, and replacement of tanks at the Conroe Center totaling $1,187,374. The multiple campus projects include the CTE auto tech renovations, uh, athletic lockers at Oak Ridge High School, Armstrong gym repainting, and sidewalks at, at Runyon Elementary, totaling $349,959. These projects together present a total of $3,081,185 and are to be funded with the 2008 bond referendum. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? On the um, CTE Auto Tech Edition, can you explain that to me? I, I just, I'm, maybe I'm just not clear on what, what's being, what CTE is. Maybe I'm not sure. Well, it, it is a renovation of the existing Auto Tech. Okay, just a renovation of what they've got. Update. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay, any other questions? All right, all those in favor? Okay, and all those opposed, motion carries. All right, item 4B, bond referendum update, Dr. Stockton. Well, I'll try to ask you to present that item. Again, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, <clears throat> members of the board, uh, our 2008 bond referendum, 
referendum <coughs> update. <coughs> we'll start with the Connor High School ninth grade campus. Uh, I'd like to start out this project is on schedule. Uh, we've currently got structural steel in, uh, in progress. The concrete block walls are also in progress. Uh, as you can see here, some of those are, are starting to go up and close in, close in the buildings. Uh, the roof deck is also in process, so uh, at the, our schedule of events is tracking just as we planned with, with no major surprises. Uh, Conroe High School is scheduled to open in August of this year. On schedule, appears to be the direction. N.K. Snyder, uh, again, this project is on schedule. Uh, it is scheduled to uh, turn over uh, admin areas first, second week of June. The rest of the building for furniture the first week of July, and it will open for school. As you can see, the masonry is near complete. Uh, interior finishes are progressing. We've got floor tile, we've got casework, we've got finished painting. Uh, see, uh, this project is again progressing. This here you're looking at the large common area uh, in the middle. Where Stockpile area for most electric. As you can see, some are installed in the in the picture. Some are still created. They're all installed. Uh, John B. Pete Junior High School, and this project is on schedule. Uh, it is scheduled to open uh, this summer as well. We've got uh, the admin areas to be turned over the first or second week of June. The remainder of the building for furniture first week of July. It will start for school. Again, masonry is near complete. Uh, the area, the site is starting to dress up and clean up nicely. Interior finishes are progressing just as we were at Snyder. As you can see, uh, starting to see finished colors, finished materials, finished things. Uh, again, it is progressing as we planned, but no major surprises. Moving on to Flex 14. Uh, Flex 14 is on schedule. It is scheduled to open in August of 2014. Uh, so what you're seeing here are uh, paving areas that have been completed. Uh, this particular project is uh, paving is almost done. They've left out areas for the crane to erect the steel. The building slab is under construction currently. Uh, structural steel is scheduled to deliver uh, later this month. It is, again, progressing well with no surprises. Flex 16 is also scheduled to open in August of 2014. It is on schedule as well. Uh, it looks a little bit different because of the site had to be cleared before they started, uh, but it is progressing as, as it is planned. The site utilities, you can see the, uh, or you may not be able to see, but there's pipes sticking up out of the ground. Uh, those are all, that, that's the underground drainage utilities. They're installed. They are stabilizing for the parking area now. So in the next two weeks or so, on the ground, have a hard stabilization areas where rain won't, won't affect the delivery of materials, things of that nature. That completes our <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> item 5A, financial reports. Dr. Stock. Well, Mr. Rice, if you'll come present that information. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, here to present the financial <coughs> statements for the district for the month of February. Uh, these statements will uh, include the general fund, debt service fund, general nutrition, and our self-funded insurance. Uh, the first uh, statement that we're looking at here is the balance sheet for the month. It shows our assets, liabilities, and fund balance for each one of the funds. We always like to look at our cash and our short-term investments since that's our largest asset. As you can see, we have cash on hand in the general fund of $500. Bank deposits of five hundred nine thousand and uh, investments of two hundred and sixty million dollars. Also, like to uh, track our property taxes and see how we're doing compared to the previous year. And uh, you know, last month we were just a little bit behind, but this month we caught back up and uh, exceeded where we were last year. So that's tracking very well. Uh, the next statement is our income statement. It shows our revenues, expenditures, and fund balances for each one of the funds. Uh, Always like to look at our revenues, where they're generated from, and from the uh, uh, local area, we can see that the largest uh, generator is our property taxes. Uh, also, uh, 
the food services, food sales, and self-funded come from our premium contributions. And if we want to look at our expenditures by function, uh, you can see that. And if you look in the debt service fund, uh, in February we did make our, our first uh, service payment. So that's reflected here. And with the taxes coming in and they're, and they're looking very well, we're projecting our increase now in the general fund uh, around $13.6 million. We, we anticipate that's still rising as more taxes come in. And on the debt service side, we still show a decrease because we haven't transferred the monies that we assume we will be able to in August, bringing that to y'all. Child nutrition still looking at an, a small increase of about $40,000. Uh, Self-funded insurance uh, for the year, we've had total revenues of $14.1 million, total expenses of $16.1 million, revenues under expenses currently of about $2 million. Our health and wellness center participation for the month of February, we had 537 uh, people uh, come to the wellness center for a total of 3,800 uh, people this year, and uh, that's averaging about 635. 2008 bond referendum. Currently sold 441 million of our 527 million dollar bond referendum, leaving us with about 86 million dollars left to sell. Uh, we've currently expended and encumbered 419 million dollars of that. We're estimating about 34 million dollars left to complete the program, leaving us with a projected forecast of 454 million dollars. That will leave us with a contingency of right around 73 million dollars uh, at the end of the project. Investments for the month. At the end of uh, January, we had $445 million invested. At the end of February, $408 million. Uh, the district, weighted average maturity is one day since we are on demand deposit, but the pools themselves are actually at 57 days of WAN. Just to kind of explain that a little bit, that they're just not in overnight funds. Uh, yield to maturity of the uh, portfolio is 0.1079. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, is at Questions? Yeah. Mr. Rice, do we prepare a separate income statement for child nutrition? Sir? Is there a separate income statement for now, child nutrition, or is it kind of blended in with everything else? It, it, was, it, was, it was shown. Is it a separate income statement? Uh, yes, sir. Well, if you'd like, I can I'll, I'll, I'll catch a copy after. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I got a question about the uh, funded uh, health care fund. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Didn't we agree a couple board meetings ago to transfer some money into that? Is that showing reflected that is not in the way we will do that on a monthly basis? Okay. Just, just the amount we actually have at the current time cash to fund it because that is still reflecting an accrual of $2.6 million. So we still have cash available. So once we go through that cash, then we'll start moving what we need from the general fund into the self-funded. So we're not going to do the transfer until we actually do it on a monthly basis as needed. As needed. Because I was, I, that wasn't my understanding what we were going to do. Yeah, Y'all approved a $3 million transfer? I thought we were right, going to do it I immediately. We were doing, transferring $3 million into the fund. I thought we were doing we were just, it immediately. We were going to move it as needed. We, we can move it. You know, all, but we were, we were going to move it as needed. As needed. How will we know if yeah, we're we... going to exceed the three million or not, or what what's left to fund? How are we going to know that? I guess that, that's what that's what I guess I think. Yeah, because then we don't, we lose what the true loss ratio is sure. once it's transferred. So I, yeah, I guess how are we how are we tracking this? We we were just going to you know, do it as we needed the uh, But we can track that all mm -hmm. at once. The other thing I wanted to note, I guess since you brought that up, is um, on our budgeting for the health insurance, the projections are the average increase for this next year will be somewhere between 32 and 35 percent, including self-funded plans. That's the average. So given our loss rate, um, the president of Aetna was on this morning on Business Channel, and Given all of the uh, Affordable Care Act, the fact that we're covering people that have not been insured before, and just a higher utilization. So just FYI, I think we should take that into consideration for the budget. 
Because that's kind of a scary number. <laughs> Extremely scary. Extremely scary, but. All right, any other questions, Mr. Price? All right, thank you, Mr. Price. Okay. Thank you. All right. So item six is necessary, as I understand it. <clears throat> item 7A, appointment of investment <laughs> committee for the board of trustees, Dr. Stock. This is Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Your board policy BDB allows you to appoint ad hoc committees as you deem, as the president deems appropriate, and there's been interest expressed in forming a uh, an committee to research investment opportunities for the district. So, Mr. Sanders, I would it to you to determine whether or not you want to appoint a committee or not. All right. Uh, yes, I would like to appoint an investment committee for the Board of Trustees. This will be an advisory board, as I understand it only, and they will bring back any items to the full board for any uh, action. No action will be taken by this committee. I'd like to appoint uh, Ms. C.J. Haynes, Mr. John Husbands, and Mr. Datron Williams to serve as that committee, and as well as Dr. Stockton and I will serve as ex officios. Okay. Next item is item. 8B, Region 6 ESC Board of Directors election, Dr. Stock. And Mrs. Gladys, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, this is an exciting new opportunity we've never experienced before. You're getting to vote for two spots that are open on the Educational Service Center Region 6 Board of Directors. That's the ballot I'm passing around. Blue, um, if Dr. Brown would take one and pass the rest on. <laughs> um, the blue yes, form, I, you I, I stand right for it. <laughs> is, the, is your ballot. Um, I sent the very limited information that we received about the candidates home to you, which was not much at all, yes. Um, I think the only thing we really know about one of the candidates so is that um, I wanted to vote twice. one of them has been on the board previously for nine years. And um, all I can assume is that they've never had an opposition candidate before, and that's why we've never voted. So they request that you each cast a ballot for your selections for those open positions, and we will submit them to the Regional Service Center to determine who is on the board of directors. All right. Does this need to be a, I need since it's a no. ballot, it's not a public vote, we just, you just vote our ballots? Paper. Correct. And then you'll collect them? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I would ask board members to go ahead and what's the deadline? The deadline the turned in by April 5th. Can you guess? Do staff members serve on this? Do board members serve on You've this? Do so tenants serve on yeah. this? Do citizens serve on this? Do you know? I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> My question is, are, are these people uh, serving on the Board of Directors of Region 6, the yes. Education Service Center? Are they board members of districts, staff members of districts, superintendents of districts, or citizens? It's the same as here in the right, you only have to be a citizen. Yeah, I think they're just citizens. I think they probably can't be um, sitting members of boards. I think that'd be a conflict for them. So I think probably they're retired educators, I would bet, for the most part. I think they all are. And, and you know, one option is to simply not cast your ballot, and I can return the blank ballot back to the Region Service Center if you don't feel like you're an informed voter, or as Dr. Brown pointed out, I, they, the deadline for me to have them back to them is April 5th. Um, I don't have a synopsis of them. You got it. That, well, you got, you got what we got. Yeah, this is all they sent to us, and further complicated, the these two represent a different area, Region 6, so they're not from this area. They're in. They're in. <laughs> I guess you have. So you're, so you're saying the first one, DDCJ, Dr. Stockton? All right, Dr. Stockton. I'm sorry. You, you asked, you said that you thought they were all educators. Does that mean that the one with TDCJ was with Wyndham? Or were you just guessing? I, I, was, I was guessing. Okay. I think it's right. On the, from the, the administrators that I've met, or the board members I met previously, were all retired educators. All right. All right, we'll just let you collect these at the, yes. at the end of our board meeting. All right. Mm -hmm. There being no further business, um, Mr. Sanders, I wanted to say one thing. I was slow on gathering my thoughts, but uh, this is to Mr. Uh, Darkwald. Obviously not commenting on the issue at the facilities. I just want to say on behalf of the board that, and as a dad, 
I think your family should be really proud of you. We appreciate the preparation, the presentation. You know, I think a parent like you is what makes CISD a, a great school district. And I just wanted to applaud you and on behalf of all the board, I think we appreciate your type of your type of participation and your type of enthusiasm for your kids and for the school district. So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for the comment as well. Yes, we do appreciate your coming and participating. All right. Anyone have anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? You have a motion and second. All in favor? All opposed? The motion carries. We are adjourned. Very good.